This episode of Pot Against Evil is brought to you by That's My Entertainment. Travis? Yeah? You know about That's My Entertainment, correct? I am aware of its existence, correct? Right, yes. I mean, we wouldn't be able to do this show. Well, I mean, we'd do this show, but it wouldn't be nearly as good. No, we'd just be, you know, <laughs> bat your hands at the walls repeatedly. Because <laughs> uh, lucky for us, our, our new sponsors, That's My, uh, my Entertainment, uh, have helped us get in contact with some of the great people from Stand Against Evil. And they can help you too, my dear listener, help get in contact with some of your favorite, uh, you know, people from your favorite shows some of that talent there to talk with them or write articles about it. It's really cool. A great site. And you can go over there right now because they are looking for volunteers. That's right. They are looking for people to, you know, do basically like maybe do what we do. I mean, it's, it's not out of the realm of possibility. Uh, you can go in and do that uh, at their email. That's my E T V at gmail.com. That's T H A T S M Y E T V at gmail.com. Also on the announcements, Travis, mm-hmm. merch is now available for Stand Against Evil. What? Yes, there is Stand Against Evil shirts and and a mug. I don't know if there's multiple mugs. I know there's definitely a sheriff. <laughs> there was only one actually. There's one. a sheriff's sheriff's mill. Or just one mug. Just one mug. You have to fight you over it. And it's definitely cursed. Um, but so you got to fight over it. Uh, you can get a Stand Against Evil um, mug, that, like a Willard's Mill uh, uh, police officer mug and shirt. You can get a Demon Baby shirt, uh, a, a one that says, I think a new one I just, just popped up there like yesterday. I didn't see before, but it said, um, Bear Fights, the Stuff Dreams Are Made Of, <laughs> with a Stan, like with, like, like, I think, like a red flag sort of thing going mm. on. It was really cool. I'm pretty sure I'm going to get a couple for, for the podcast. Does the mug say Willard's Mill's Best Sheriff? Because if oh. it doesn't, I'm rather offended. Man, no, I'm, I'm sure it's got to be the one that Drinkwater drinks out of, so mm. that would just be false advertising. But yes, you can go to uh, StandAgainstEvilMerch.com, or I believe it's actually, I think that that's a link that you can go to as well, but if you can't find it there, it's actually under the gold label, gold label. Uh, dot com and just go to that site where they have a bunch of different fan stuff just search in stand against evil and you can find the merch there and yeah with that rigmarole out of way let's get on with the show all right and welcome to pod against Evil! Oh my goodness, guys, we have another interview today, and I am very excited about this one because he hails from my favorite place to get maple syrup and comedians. It's, uh, that's right, that's a Canadian guest today. Love those Canadians. And it's Robert Cohen. Robert, say hi. How's it going, eh? <laughs> I even did it. Oh my goodness, the, the interview can only go downhill from here. This is the high point, fellas. That's right. Uh, We've peaked. Yes. Uh, but you know, that takes the pressure off, Rob, at least uh, in my opinion. Yeah. So now we can just, yeah, now we just can sit back and relax. Uh, yeah, now I'll put on American accent. (laughs) So Rob, you have, uh, directed uh, a number of episodes for our favorite show over here, Stand Against Evil. Uh, I, I have had that honor. Mm hmm. Uh, I think the episodes specifically are actually the later half of season two. Which yeah. include, uh, I think, uh, see, I got the list here. Uh, it includes Eyes of Evie Barrett, The Hex yeah. Marks the Tots, the Demon Baby episode, as we all know, mm-hmm. Mirror mm-hmm. Mirror, the Evil Stan episode, and the season two finale, Hard Day's Night. Yeah. Wow. Those are, uh, out of a, a great season, those are some real great episodes too. So I'm very excited to, to get to talk with uh, anyone that was involved in such great, great episodic content. Uh, it says here you also uh, were a writer on one of them. Uh, were you a writer also on Mirror Mirror? Um, yeah, Dana and I, um, I directed the second half of season two and then I just finished directing all of season three. Um, and, uh, Dana and I co-wrote Mirror, 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 uh, you know, the, uh, evil anti-stand episode. Um, so, so that was the only one that I was involved in the writing. Oh, okay. So I, I didn't know you that you directed all of season three as well. I thought it was another uh, batch of episodes, but you directed all of season three. Uh, yeah, I just finished doing the whole season. Wow, that is fantastic. Uh, yeah, I, I loved it. <laughs> well, obviously, it's such a great show. Who wouldn't love it? What monster wouldn't love filming Demon Babies? And, Absolutely. <laughs> uh, so how did you come to work on Stand Against Evil? Um. 
Uh, I mean, one main way and sort of a side way. I mean, the main way is Dana and I have been, I know this will make him physically uncomfortable, but he and I have been best friends forever since 1992. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, We met when I was a writer on the Ben Stiller show and uh, he came and did a bunch of sketches on the show and we met and hit it off and have been friends ever since. And, um, you know, worked on a ton of stuff together. And then when he uh, sold Stand Against Evil um, to IFC, uh, you know, he was telling me about it. It was great. And um, then uh, in season two, or when season two got picked up, he uh, because I'd been directing other TV and commercials for a while, uh, he asked me if I would consider directing the second half of season two. And I was thrilled and said, of course, uh, cause I love working with him and Janet Varney and other people that are friends of ours. And, um, then, uh, we, you know, proceeded to talk about the second half of the season. And then, uh, I pitched him an idea, just sort of a one liner thing about, you know, an evil mirror image stand. And Dana really liked that. And so we expanded that into the script for episode seven. Um, and then, you know, just friends helping friends out, um, doing punch up on the episodes for that season. Um, that's how I got in the door with Stan. And, and previously I'd worked for IFC for four years before directing uh, a lot of episodes of the show Marin with Mark Marin. Mm-hmm. So uh, I had a great relationship with IFC and they're just amazing to work for. And uh, that combined with, you know, Dana um, led me into season two. Well, that that sounds lovely. I'm not sure why Dana would be physically uncomfortable with that. I feel very physically like comfortable. I mean, it it actually warms the the cockles of my heart, and I don't even I don't even know what they are, but they're warm right now. Um, I think he's I think he gets uncomfortable being sexually charged up by a Canadian, and so well, that's, knowing just, just knowing I'm talking about him right now is sending blood to various places that he just doesn't want to handle. Oh, I see. Well, I mean, I, I don't, I, I have no problem with being sexually charged up by Canadian. I prefer it, eh? Um, it's, 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 I consider it an honor. Um, thank you. Honor with you. <laughs> uh, it, it's ironic, really, because, you know, you, you'd think you, you could just get the little blue pill, a little blue pill with all your free health care and all that stuff, but you don't even need it because of all of your sexy exactly. Canadians. Um, thank you. what were we talking about? I feel like we've gotten off topic. Hey, oh, that's right. Stand against evil. Right, yes. right. God, get yeah. head in the game, Nick. Um, but yeah, so uh, directing the later half of season two and jumping onto a show that, while it is very episodic, it does have its you know established mythology and continuity. Yeah. Did you find that uh, a struggle at all to keep up with some of the previous storylines and making sure that you didn't go against the grain on what has already been pre-established? Um, I honestly, my, my non funny answer, like all my answers are, is <laughs> I knew about the show from Dana and my number one goal was to make sure that he was happy with what I was giving him. And so I wanted to basically give, continue to give him the, the show that had been established in season one and the first half of, half of season two, as far as tone and, you know, performance and, um, so because we know each other so well, I think that was helpful. And, you know, he's the final say on stuff. So I would run everything by him to make sure he was happy. But um, Janet, uh, I'd known really well. And um, once I was able to meet John and Nate and Deborah, uh, it just uh, became pretty easy just because they're so good. And I had a blueprint that was there. So it was me knowing about the show from him and from watching it and then uh, basically replicating the tone and then the story every week would change. And because Dana and I grew up with so many of the same influences, it was really a shorthand as far as, you know, what the vibe was. And uh, that's, that was how I think it was pretty fluid. And by the end of season two, and this is all credit to the actors, we were really humming and, you know, it's a challenging production schedule. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, I just, you know, uh, there was a moment at the end of season two, we were shooting a scene between Janet and John and everything was just clicking perfectly. Um, and Dan and I just sat back by the monitors and just let Janet and John 
do their thing because it everything was just so smooth and they were just crushing it and um i was very happy that he was happy and uh it kind of you know it just found itself it's the challenge is staying on schedule Sure, it's a uh, for what I understand it's a very accelerated shooting schedule. Um, oh, yeah. it's, Crazy. I, you did season three in about like what six weeks or something? Twenty four days. Twenty four. Wow, that is yeah. That sounds insane. I don't. <laughs> uh, what do you? What's it like shooting on that like uh, schedule? Are you kind of used to that? Uh, you know, fast paced shoot. Are you are you used to more of a uh, you know, longer on some of your projects? Um, you know, having the experience with the IFC before with Marin, it was the same schedule. It's three days an episode Mm -hmm. and then you, you do two at a time. So over a five day week, you're shooting almost two episodes. So, you know, we have this uh, incredible DP, Tim Burton, um, the talented Tim Burton, not the other Tim Burton. And, (laughs) uh, he just is a killer. The guy is just so good. And, uh, you just, you, you you sort of have to make it work because that's a schedule. And then you have the weather in Atlanta, which is really unpredictable and sometimes a nightmare. Um, and you just have to improvise. So I'd say the, the incredibly well-prepared and then having to check it all to sort of improvise to stay on schedule. So um, it was just prep. Like I think the thing that saves you with a show like this is, is prep. And I, pride myself on being really specific about it. Um, And a lot of times, like I said, you just have to bail out and come up with a solution really quickly. Um, But most of the other shows I've done are are standard five-day schedules. So this is really accelerated. Yeah. um, I always, I'm very interested on the production side of stuff too. Um, Like when you get, say, a script and you see like on the front page, like, oh, this this is a demon baby episode. Like, what are the yeah. like thoughts that run through your mind of that? Like, do you just immediately start running through like the you know production? Like, okay, how's this gonna work? Like, do I need like what kind of uh, shots am I gonna get out of this? Or is it more like demon baby? I have the best job in the world. Like, what? It's both. It's um, you know, you have a production meeting and you have a sort of a, a prep period before the production meeting. So the way that I like to do it. Um, just cause I'm such a nerd and used to like draw my own comic books and things like that is I read the script and as I'm reading it, I'm drawing out with stick figures and stuff, what I think would be a, a way to complete the shot, the way it's written. And then, you know, some camera angles, but also just draw it out. So like when the demon baby attacks Dana in the hallway of his house, Dana and I were talking about the scene with Jaws when Quint is, you know, getting bitten by the shark and we knew we wanted to have that moment in there so it was really just making sure we match that camera angle when he gets bitten um but then there's other stuff that you find out when you go on location like the house that we were at for season two that kevin lives in is a completely separate house from this season and that house from season two had this great hallway that had these three doors that led to these weird little rooms so when i was there doing the scout um i saw that we could do a fake out with Kevin looking door number one and door number two. And then you think the baby's behind door number three. And then you turn around and this giant baby shadow is on top of Dana at the end of the hall. Mm -hmm. And now he's trapped. So it's sort of seeing that and coming up with shots that I think would be fun, but it's also like, what's the, what's the joke of this scene and how can we make it kind of scary? So um, I just like to draw everything out and it, it's uh it's just a way, like I sit there in the room and just sketch the room and then how I, think we can make it scary with the shots. Wow, that is fantastic. I love the idea of the of Quint from Jaws, like that being the inspiration. Uh, from what I hear, uh, when a demon baby bites into you, uh, their, their eyes, they're like a doll's eyes. And uh, yes. they do roll over white. Exactly. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's great. Um, also, you've done uh, some other real fun episodes like Mirror Mirror. Uh, I really like yep. that episode can, uh, with the... Uh, what do you call it? The, the drug freakout, uh, from yeah. Leon Drinkwater. I always yeah, love yeah. drug freakout scenes. Like, how are those yeah. storyboarded out? Do you have, like, all the, like, do you have the ideas of what he's seeing, uh, before you do the shoot, or does that, like, come in after? Like, what's, what's the process for a, like, tripped out drug sequence? Um, <clears throat> Dana and I, he, you know, the scripts are really pretty tight when you go into, 
shooting, but um, he and I went out to dinner, I think, one night, and I started pitching him crazy things that um, it, Leon is seeing, but Stan is not seeing. Mm-hmm. So we, you know, there's a ventriloquist dummy, and there's the one with the cat face, and then we thought it would be really funny if somebody had, like, a canned ham and um, all this <laughs> other stuff. And and then the reality is we were in the sheriff's station, which is, if you're inside it, it's physically a very narrow room. So it's how do you introduce these weird things into a room that you can really do Stan's POV um, or Leon's POV. And so we just started suggesting crazy stuff while it was happening. And then as a fluke, the ventriloquist dummy operator was there and uh, sort of slide over a little bit so you can see the puppet being operated. But it made total sense because, uh, you know, Leon's on drugs. So um, you just sort of bring your bag of weirdness, and then uh, within the time permitted, you start just sort of throwing weird stuff in there. But it's all based on the script, and um, we just pitched crazy stuff, and Nate was awesome, and John was great just playing it straight. And Mm -hmm. then, um, you know, we knew in post there'd be some weird music, or we'd put it like an echo effect. Uh, So it was the same as when Leon's getting beaten up. (laughs) <laughs> uh, in the police station, we had that same narrow issue, and Bob, our stunt guy, who's a, the greatest guy in the world, had a bunch of pads, and we knew that we could take Nate and sort of move him left and right like a metronome while he's getting beat up, and he would just have to, and then he'd fall on the pads on the right, but we'd never see the pads. So, um, in the shot, it just looks. Uh, it just looks weird. Like he's getting punched left and right. And with the right music and slow-mo, it it just looks even cooler. So, um, (laughs) it's kind of going into it with weird ideas and having a great group of people pitch stuff on top of it. And that's kind of how we did it. No, I I love that. Cause I, I even noticed during the, the drug freak out too, of like the Ventriloquist dump uh, dummy operator is in some shots and he's not in others. It's like, it's so weird and it's freaking me out. And, yeah. uh, I, I, so I, I love that. And then, uh, you were speaking of drink water being beaten up and I actually had the thought to myself, like, it looks like he's on a trolley or something, the way he flies back and forth. Uh, like he's uh, just, you know, he was, he, he was literally, uh, Bob, the stunt guy was on one side and we had a big crew guy on the other side <laughs> and Nate would just fall and be caught. And then they would sort of fling him back up to the other guy. So it was like tossing a a sack of potatoes back and forth with those pads underneath. And, uh, you know, Nate Moody, he's, he's the man. He'll just do anything. Playing hot potato with an actor. That's <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I, we I love did. It. We just threw him. Man, that's, that is great. Uh, so, uh, obviously you, uh, have, you know, have much, much experience with, uh, you know, the funnier aspects of, uh, you know, setting up the shots for the joke and stuff. Um, the season finale of season two, uh, there's a lot more emotional moments in it and a lot more serious actual drama going on. Um, what's it like, you know, when you're shooting a scene like that in a show that's usually much more up on the comedy bits of it, what's it like trying to find the energy for a scene that is much more like, you know, like say Stan and Evie, uh, right before he goes through the portal, them like really hashing out their, their like, uh, emotions they're feeling there before having, trying to go save his wife. What's, what's that type of scene like? Uh, you know, my honest answer is, um, that was one of those moments where the best thing I could do was just get out of the way okay. and let John and Janet do their thing because they were so dialed in and it was actually starting to rain that night. I think it was our last night or our second to last night of shooting, but we were in this field and it was starting to rain and we kind of had to go quickly, but, they were just so in the zone that the only thing I told them is just make sure that you guys sort of stand in this one area because we had to avoid seeing, you know, like a train track and a highway sort of where the location was, but they were, they were fantastic. And that was one of the fastest scenes we shot because they were so good. And Dana and I just sat by the monitors. They were in this amazing blue light and, uh, it's it's just like you kind of feel it and you there's no notes to give because that's just annoying because you're just giving notes to give notes but they nailed it like i think we did two takes and that was it we had two cameras and they got they everything we needed to edit a great scene was there and 
um, afterwards, they just everybody kind of knew we had captured this incredible emotional scene between these two characters. Um, and I certainly didn't want to mess that up with, you know, my stupid ideas. <laughs> uh, that is a very honest answer. Um, but, but a good yeah. one. I, I, I think that that strategy really paid off for you. Cause I think that's probably one of the best episodes of the series. And, uh, it was, it was really, really well done. Um, oh, well, it's thanks to, I mean, they were, they were really, really in the zone and it just was, uh, you could just feel it. Like I, I, I remember that evening so specifically because we knew ex- like you just saw it happening and the editing was just going to be camera angles. Right. Yeah. So and I think a lot of that is in season three. Oh man, I cannot wait. I'm so excited. Pot Against Evil is brought to you by the Stand Against Evil Fan Club. Travis, mm-hmm. have you joined Stand Against Evil Fan Club yet? Is it on Facebook? Yes, it's on Facebook. Then... That thing you don't use? <laughs> How about Twitter? Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, it's on Twitter. Okay. Mm-hmm. You... No. <laughs> man, you are terrible. Come on. You've got to get with the times, my friend. I know friend. where they're located. What do you want from me? Man, if I find you on MySpace, I swear to God. Meep. <laughs> Tom, you are my only friend. Uh, no, but you gotta get involved with this, this group, Travis. It's a fantastic way to stay up to date on all your Stand Against Evil news. And, uh, yeah, that's where I found out that the merch was happening, actually. The Stand really? Against Evil merch. Yeah. Huh. Uh, I was, I was just hanging out in the fan club and that's where I was like, holy shit, merch. Well, I, I gotta go grab, I gotta go grab my mug right away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like, you know, they give me that, they keep me up to date on that. And there's trivia on the weekends and stuff. In fact, they even have every once in a while some kind of cool stand merch cool. and giveaways and stuff for you know stuff that you can get buttons and uh, buttons. some other co- some other cool jazz. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you know what? Uh, they are so cool. I'm actually going to hang out with them in person. Ooh. That's right. Uh, I will be in New York uh, of com- of, for Comic Con, New York Comic Con for that's my entertainment uh, specifically there. But I will be attending the Stand Against Evil panel with some of the really cool people from the Stand Against Evil fan club. So it's going to be a really, really fun time. And I look forward to meeting all of you guys and, uh, you know, the, the fans and, uh, just ha- hanging out with the, the cast and crew. It's going to be a real good time. But again, it's, if you would also like to hang out with them online virtually, you can do so at Stand Against Evil Fan on Twitter or just look up Stand Against Evil Fan Club on Facebook. Uh, with that, let's get back to, uh, the show. You know, to uh, moving away from Stand Against Evil though for just a minute, I want to talk about some of your other projects as well, because sure. um, you you know d- you've done some work for other some other really great uh, comedy shows like Blackish, uh, yeah. Lady Dynamite, and mm-hmm. one of my one of my new favorites, Mystery Science Theater Three Thousand: The Return. Yeah, which, which I thought was a, that would, that's a very interesting like uh, a directing job for there because you're directing people making fun of another movie, which yeah. I- that's that's exactly like that's a real fun like how how does that like work are you like do you are you uh like just messing around with like pacing of certain jokes like or is it uh just like uh, some of the physical gags that they have on there i mean i enjoy a lot of the skits um it says here you you directed the episodes for my personal favorite two which are the wizards of the lost kingdom one and two oh my which, god hilarious which are just great what was it what was it uh like working on that set um uh, again joel is somebody that i've known a really long time and um when the show got picked up uh by netflix to do the revival um he asked me if i would direct it and he directed all the silhouette stuff and I directed okay. all the stuff on the spaceship um, that was non-silhouette stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and so <clears throat> the good news, bad news about that gig is uh, you only have one camera and it never cuts. So oh, that's right. So you have to get it in one take. And that was the fun challenge because even like the rap and Rept- Reptilicus, <laughs> uh, those guys had to nail that rap song with props in one take. And it's, I think it's a two and a half minute song and, you know, we rehearsed it and rehearsed it and we shot it a bunch of times and sometimes the props would fall over or sometimes Jonah would miss a lyric, which is completely understandable. And you just keep going till you get it. But that's kind of the cool part because you're, you are, you have one camera. Right. And, um, so the, the sets were in, incredible. And we shot it up in, uh, you know, the valley, uh, in this weird little soundstage. 
but when you were on the spaceship, you you were excited to be on the MST3K spaceship, but it looked like a spaceship, and the moon base looked like a moon base, and we had these great guest stars, and uh, you, it was just planning. Again, it was like the the delicious combination of not enough time and too much stuff, and you just have to sort of plan it out. But um, I did that whole season uh, last year, and it was... I think we shot it on seven days. Wow, that is that is really cool. I really like, uh, you know, I wasn't even a big MST3K fan uh, before right. the revival um, because I'm just I'm just too young. I don't get all the old movie references yeah. from the previous yeah, one. Yeah. So yeah. them updating it, I actually I feel like I got to discover what everyone was crazy about. Uh, uh, you know, t- ten twenty years ago, I was like, oh man, I I get it now. I understand. And I just love being like, feel like I was brought into a community over there. So that was, yeah, yeah it was really cool. It's great. They, they, uh, they did six more this summer and I think they start, uh, during Thanksgiving. Oh my goodness. I am, I, yeah, a lot of good stuff this fall. Stand Against Evil coming yeah. back. Absolutely. Mystery, Sci- Mystery Science Theater. I, I, I'm, I'm yeah. going to die of laughing before we hit, before we hit Christmas. It's ridiculous. I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> it's, it's uh yeah it, it's that show is just really fun because again it's it's how do you how do you cover so much territory with the limitations that you have and I, I enjoy those challenges and hopefully I'm successful at that sometimes but um it you just sort of I use just like a weird Vulcan logic and you just go okay uh, I don't want to waste time freaking out here's what we got to do and uh, uh, let's just figure it out and. Um, that's one of the amazingly fun things that I love about directing because it is this weird chess game that you have to, it's, you know, I'll, I'll keep throwing nerd references at you, but like the Kobayashi Maru to me, it's like, you don't want to accept that this is impossible. Like there's always a way to figure out how to get it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, especially under intense time pressure, I just, uh, there's a sickness that I have that I enjoy that. You you want to find a way to do the Kirk and and hack your way in yeah. and, and defeat it. No, yeah, I, because it's it's uh, you know you want everybody to have a good time. Uh, but Mystery Science Theater was just so fast. We were doing two episodes a day with music and effects and green screen and puppets that would break and you know just like <laughs> weird stuff. But but I love how challenging it is. No, I, I love that. I love, I, I mean, of course, all the practical effect work is great. Um, was there any uh, uh, practical effect on the batch episodes you were working on that was particularly troublesome? Or, uh... Um, <clears throat> uh, I did the whole season, so I'm trying to think. Uh, I mean, the props during the Reptilica song was one thing, and we had a couple puppet breaks down, breakdowns a few times. Um... I would say the one day that was challenging is we had a lot of people that were had donated to the fund to get the show back that were uh, playing wedding guests on the moon base. So we had, I think, like 40 or 45 extra guests on the stage. So you're kind of shooting a giant wedding video, um, <laughs> you know, with one camera. And it's, right. it's like a lot to cover. Sure, sure. Well, that is fantastic um it makes me want to cry wilderness and do the reptilicus oh, wow. rap i'm i'm wow. just now now i just want to go back and watch like now i have just back excuse to go back and watch them and try and catch like the long shots and stuff like that oh yeah what i have here i always i wonder this and i i, I never have the answer of um the bubble uh field um, oh yes so i i recognize that like i think sometimes it's hiding some sort of cut and then sometimes I feel like it's not hiding a cut. Like I think it was the same shot. Is that is it ever? Uh, uh, is there a purpose for the the bubble field that's not hiding a cut? Or because or, I th- uh, no, it, it's a that's a good eye. Like we came up with a bubble field to help hide a cut mm-hmm. because sometimes you just had to piece stuff together just for time. And so the bubble field seemed like a good way. I think we we discussed that a couple of weeks before we shot, but. Um, uh, that was a way to, um, you know, hide a cut if we had to. So good eye. Oh wow, that's some really great editing too. Because some of the uh, some of the cuts, I'm like, okay, yeah, they they did the hide to cut, but some of them were so seamless that other than the bubble field, I really thought it was the same shot. So that's a 
that's really good editing work there. So that that was that's very impressive. So yeah, uh, getting back to Stand Against Evil for a minute. You've uh, just wrapped season three. Mm-hmm. Um, so is there anything we can expect from season three as far as a feel? Like we, I know from season two's ending, uh, it was very apocalyptic. Like it was very like all hands on deck. Uh, you know, shit is about to get real. So does season three have like a, a different feel about it of like higher stakes or like, you know, bigger emotional, uh, in- investment or, or anything like that? Um, yeah, it does actually. Um, you know, I don't want to give anything away. Sure. Um, but, uh, the, uh, you know, the way that Dana mapped out the third season, uh, which I think is really cool and I, I won't give anything away is you obviously end season two on a pretty substantial situation. Um, so he had to write himself out of a corner and, but, um, things in season three, I think really accelerate not only in the situation that we left everybody in the end of season two, but there's some, I think some awesome monsters. And, um, I think, uh, you know, Nate and Deborah have a lot more to do. Um, I just think there's, there's a, there's a part of season three sort of early on. There's a, a variety of episodes that are just like, just crazy, fun, weird episodes. And then there's, you start to get a sense of where things are headed with Stan and they pay off towards the end of season three. Um, I think there's a really great ending to season three that um, I think people will be surprised about, but uh, uh, it, it definitely is an, is a, a level up from season two. Oh goodness. I, that's you Seeing all the buzzwords, I'm super excited. I, uh... Yeah, I mean, it's, it's all Dana and the other writers that that helped out, and you know, there's there's episodes that are just self contained, super cool silliness. Um, <laughs> again, I can't say specifics, but you know, we would be filming some of them, and, and everybody's just taking pictures because it's like, holy crap! Like, how is this happening? This is so nerdy and cool. I cannot believe we're doing this. Um, and when you see this season, you'll not, not to overpromise anything, but you'll be like, Oh yeah, that is, that is awesome. And so we just, we just had fun because we got to sort of live out a lot of nerd fantasy stuff, um, doing three, but it all stayed on track for the, the story for the season. Man, that is, that is just too exciting. I can't, I just, oh, I can't even handle it. I'm just, I'm, I'm it's, vibrating it's over great. here. Rob, I'm just, I'm great. <laughs> uh, but yeah, with, uh, you know, working on, on Stand Against Evil, uh, would you, what would you say is a experience working on Stand Against Evil that you have had not, not had with any of your previous work? What, does it, anything particular that makes Stan stand out for you? Or stand um, out you know, for you, I guess, if we're gonna go for the pun. We can go for the pun. <laughs> um, uh, you know, it honestly, it was so much fun just working with Dana and friends of ours that came down to do some guest starring roles. And, um, having done the second half of season two, I, I sort of knew the system there. So it was a lot easier to jump back in and continue that system, um, for season three. Um, I just think it was, uh, it was definitely one of the most fun jobs that I've had, uh, directing and, you know, there've been other ones that are just a blast. Uh, but since this was the whole season, it was a, a chance to, you know, like settle in and know that there's these eight stories that we're going to do that all have these different cool bits. And, um, because you shoot it out of order, you're surprised, you know, like, again, I won't say anything. There's, there's two moments in two different episodes that everybody in the set kept talking about where they're like, Oh man, tomorrow is this. Mm-hmm. And, and we would, everybody gets super excited. And then the day we were shooting X, uh, people were just like, this is, this is crazy. Like, this is insane. And they were right. It was like, what are we doing here? Like, I can't believe they're paying us to make this very strange situation come to reality. So, um, it was just, it was, I mean, it was, uh, just having, just having all of our buddies, uh, there and come down to, play with us was fantastic yeah i 
I find that fantastic as well. I, <laughs> I know I'd be one of those people that'd be on the set. Like, is today, is today the murder puppets? Is today murder pu- puppet? No, it's tomorrow. Right. Oh my goodness. It's right. the, I'd be like waiting like on Christmas for, for yeah. the murder puppets. Uh, but that is so fantastic. I cannot wait to uh, watch season three and watch how this all shakes out. Um, it has been a pleasure talking with you, Rob. Uh, fantastic. Hope to have you on again for season four. Oh, uh, knock on wood. Hopefully we can get the season four and have you back on. Yeah. My uh, pleasure. I, I hope season four happens just for the show and for Dana. And, um, it's just, uh, you know, I, I, I have a question for you if I'm allowed to ask you a question. You're going to flip it around on me. Well, I mean, normally we don't allow it, but I guess you've been such a lovely guest. I'll allow you one. <laughs> well, it's it's a stand against evil question, but okay. Uh, what would you say uh, your your fans love the most about the show? What do you think they respond to the most? Oh boy! Um, as far as the people I've interacted with and what they've uh, connected with, it's got to be the relationships between uh, the characters specifically. The characters are what jump out. Um, the relationship between Janet and John is the bedrock of it. And then everyone kind of has their favorite character that they connect with. Ours over here is Denise because we're all millennials trying to figure out what to do in an adult world. And Denise, right. Denise feels like our avatar of cluelessness. Right. Um, so we are always rooting for Denise. <laughs> um, but right. yeah, I think we love the heart of it and not to be too cheesy. Uh, yeah, yeah. Just the, yeah, the, the obvious love and care that goes into it. Like that's at least that's where and me personally, that's where I, f- I feel like it's where it's at. Uh, but you know, yeah. that's, that's me and my bleeding. Like even my favorite planeteer is the heart one, the lame yeah. one. So yeah, I, I'm a big yeah. softy like that. Yeah. Uh, but that's, that's a good answer. Cause it's, it's your answer. But at the same time, I agree with you. I think it's, you know, the, the John and Janet relationship and stand against evils so interesting and i think season two and definitely season three uh that's solidified and they are definitely the core of that show um you know evie and stan and uh it makes my job easy because you have two incredibly talented actors uh who are just vibing and and again like you know when to get out of the way and let them do their thing but um, it's, it's really interesting. It was interesting just to see it happening and to grow. Well, yeah, they're, they're buddy cop dynamic. Like they really are, they really have the relationship of a uh, Abbott Costello, like, you know, Riggs and Murtaugh. And I, I would yeah. have said like even, uh, <laughs> I would, I, I would have said even, uh, uh, Scully and Mulder, which is yeah. funny because in season three, <laughs> they interact with, uh, 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 Scully and Mulder, uh, Mulder, yeah. uh, uh, parody version which i was just i'm like oh man that is so fitting that's great yeah those Um, guys are amazing in that episode of valerie and chris play uh those agents and they were they're just amazing mm -hmm. i can't wait for uh stan to call them some sort of idiots or something because i know like i can just may happen i can just hear (laughs) stan's voice tell him like ah you dumbasses you don't know what you're talking about it's this thing (laughs) you you may get your wish oh but uh yeah that is fantastic uh thanks for turning around on me and having me answer a question Put, putting me in the hot seat that's what a what a of live course. energy is this what it feels like I fe- it feels like the third degree i it, you know so. I, <laughs> I i also stole uh some candy in the third grade rob i'm not proud of it it was it was it was a bad okay. time in my life i was going through stuff but it's, it just it put that convenience store out of business, but I'm sure his family will be fine. Look, and his kid wasn't that sick. I didn't even see him after that that Christmas. Like that's okay. <laughs> they, However, you live with yourself, I support you. My parents said he moved to a farm upstate. I'm pretty sure it's fine. I'm um, sure he's still alive and healthy and having a great time. I don't and see a reason why a to voice. why why not or to shatter that illusion. Um, yeah, let's, let's assume he's happy. So while I go deal with that psychological trauma, Rob, it has been sure. fantastic talking with you. Um, Pleasure. <laughs> uh, we hope to have you on again in the future. Um, but uh, is there any upcoming projects of yours uh, that you'd like to promote or just, you know, your Twitter handle, social media, anything like that? Um, no, you know, it's uh, I'm not a huge social media guy. I just sure. I really hope everybody checks out season three of Stand Against Evil. and. Um, 
you know, one and two are on Hulu, which is great. People have been psyched about that, but I really think three has, uh, a, a really cool ride and, um, some just balls out hilarious, uh, things happening in it. And, and I, I think people will really like it. And, um, just, just the look and feel of it, I think really are, I hope satisfying to the fans and, and Dana's hard work. Well, I, if I know, uh, inter- the internet or fan bases, if it's not satisfactory, I'm pretty sure we'll be reasonable about it. And, uh, oh, yes. Yeah. So I'm I, sure. I wouldn't worry about it, but I, from what I've seen of, of season three trailer, I think it's going to be nothing but just completely badass. Um, yeah. I, so yeah. I, I have, I have no worries really. All, all yeah. I am is just excited to see it. I want it right now. Um, yeah, it's a bummer that it's a couple months away, but I think it'll be worth it. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back in a, into my corner and just sit here and just wait for Stan because that's that's what yeah. I do when I'm not recording for the podcast is just sitting here looking at the clock, looking at the calendar, just waiting. Sad yeah, music playing in the background and just hydrate, and you'll be okay. <laughs> well, thank you so much, and thank you everyone to listening. Uh, until next time, may the owls abide. We'll see you later, Stan fans. Bye bye. Thanks for having me. Pot Against Evil is brought to you by... Bleh. <laughs> it's brought to you by Bleh. 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 Our Transylvanian subscribers. Bleh. <laughs> that's, that's not offensive at all. <laughs> That'll go in the... Sorry, all our Transylvanian listeners. Uh, that one's going to go in the bloopers.